please subscribe to Face TV Africa and turn the notification on. Face TV Africa, Ejo, e subscribe, subscribe, eh, hete. Face TV. Muswobi. The intervention of ECOWAS in Niger Republic is a dicey issue. ECOWAS has made a declaration that they are going to invade Niger Republic and have put standby forces. And this is a declaration of war because Niger neighbors Mali, Burkina Faso, which is both ruled by uh, military governments, have warned that an intervention would be a declaration of war on their country. So we are waiting, we are getting prepared for war in Africa. Mali, Burkina Faso, Guinea, which was also hit by a recent coup, we are suspended from ECOWAS. So we have on the side of Niger Republic, Mali, Burkina Faso, Guinea, and likely Chad that will support the junta. The people in Niger Republic are supporting the military government, and it's going to be difficult for any resolution. Since the people are supporting that government, it is going to be difficult any resolution because discussions have been underway. Diplomatic, political discussions. You can see Nigeria sent the Sultan of Sokoto Absalam Abubakar, we also saw Lamido Sanusi going to meet the junta leader, but all seems to have fallen on deaf ears. President Tunuba has been advised not to invade the uh, Niger Republic because it has consequences on Nigeria. It has consequences on the north. Northern states which share border with this country have been calling on the president, raising an alarm that any further intervention, military intervention in Niger Republic, even though uh, ECOWAS has the numbers, it is going to have a devastating effect on the north. We are looking at the past where they gave uh, the junta a deadline of 6th August. It came and went. ECOWAS met again to discuss the situation in Niger and they did all they could, but yet the junta in Niger Republic. Uh, became defiant. The first indication is that it will be difficult to immediately restore democracy in the country when the people started to support the coup. It will be difficult to restore democracy in that country. So we are all prepared and we are all facing an all out war in Niger Republic. Let's remember Niger shares a border with seven countries in the region, four of which are members of ECOWAS. Of the four, Mali and Burkina Faso have been suspended due to similar coup d'etat. Both countries have threatened to support Niger if ECOWAS tries to use force. The remaining two countries in the bloc bordering Nigeria are Nigeria and Benin outside ECOWAS. Chad and Algeria have both ruled out in participating in any military action. And Libya now has its own challenges and would not want to interfere in the military action. Nigerian legislators rejected the idea they argued for and the use of other means than force. Nigeria is the largest country in the ECOWAS bloc and principal financier of the bloc. That means Nigeria is the largest. Nigeria is going to carry the burden of an invasion of the Nigerian Republic. Uh, it will be difficult for ECOWAS to carry out military intervention without the full support of Nigeria. When you look at research, Nigerian military forces are over 220,000 and they share a boundary with the Nigerian Republic. They are closest to Niger and uh, like 1,600 kilometers for them to march into Niger and uh, carry out the invasion. Other countries have a proximity problem, a closeness problem. So it will be difficult for ECOWAS to carry out any military intervention without the full support of Nigeria. Let's look at Niger Republic. Hundreds of youths have joined the military personnel to stand guard at the entrance of Niami. Some of these youths vowed to join the military to fight any incursion. So that's a challenge. Hundreds of youths have joined the military in Niger Republic. That uh, would send a message that the people are willing to defend the military government in the Nigerian Republic. So it will be very difficult to restore democracy in that country. They have set up the government. A civilian has been made a prime minister and it constituted with some of those top military officers that carried on the coup. Second, politicians in Nigeria and Ghana fear that any military intervention would result in human catastrophe, which will further destabilize the region. Politicians from Nigeria argue that any war in Niger will have a serious impact 
on northern Nigeria, a region that is already strained by insurgency. There's an argument that if uh, Nigeria could not defeat insurgency, which is a spillover from Niger Republic and other countries, how then does it hope to win the war or invade Niger Republic and expect it to win the war? You can win the battle, but can you win the war? That's a big question. You can win the battle. Can you win the war? Remember, Niger has an, a history of insurgency. And as small as that country is in size, the size of its population, uh, they are still a very tough people uh, to fight any war with. Uh, apart from Islamic terror organization, Boko Haram, that has ravaged the north eastern part of the country, clashes between farmers and pastoralists have also destabilized other parts of Nigeria. Several Nigeria states share borders with Niger. An attack on Niger would lead to a large influx of refugees into Nigeria. Uh, this has created anxiety in northern Nigeria. That's why the northern senators had to beg on President Bola Metrubu to stem any further uh, thought of invading Niger Republic. Uh, I think the ECOWAS, they are in a very difficult situation at this point in time because Niger does not seem to want to restore democratic rule. The people are supporting. It is a difficult one for ECOWAS. Let's look at uh, Niger has fought terrorism in the region and has been a reliable partner with Nigeria. So any fight with Niger is going to, sanctions given to Niger has further uh, threatened the terrorism fight in that Sahel region. And our borders uh, will further experience the influx of terrorists as a result of our clash, as a result of our war with Niger Republic. Um, the country is a member of a multinational joint tax force and the G5 Sahel, two key organizations taxed with countering terrorism and fighting trafficking in the region. So this is what Nigeria gains to lose if it attacks Niger Republic. A military intervention in Niger would result in a full-blown war, and this war will embolden terrorist group. It will also result in soldiers previously fighting side by side against terrorist group now fighting against each other. With the Islamic State West African province and ISIS affiliates already operating in the region, an attack on Niger could create a situation similar to what happened in Syria. ISIS took advantage of the fighting in Syria to establish a caliphate in 2014. So uh, looking at these interventions, uh, looking at these uh, advantages and disadvantages, Nigeria is in for a tough one with the Nigerian public. Remember, when you start a war, it is not when you defeat your enemy that uh, the war has ended. You see, there are things that uh, uh, has to do with post-war. So what happens in post-war is important. Niger is a key country that shares border with Nigeria that helps fight insecurity, fight the influx of terrorists into the country. Despite the fact that over the years we have tried to uh, stem the devastating effect insecurity has in the country, we couldn't on our own. And Niger is a key country. Most of northern Nigeria have family ties in Niger Republic. And you know, this is how close and closely related we are. We have refugees in Niger Republic. We have Nigerians in Niger Republic. Uh, the number is uh, uh, almost 300,000 Nigerians in Niger Republic. How would any invasion help ECOWAS, help Nigeria? Remember, Nigeria is the country that ECOWAS relies on heavily to fight this war in Niger. Republic. So our advice is that whatever happens, let's uh, tread with caution in that country because uh, it is going to determine the future, the future of the Nigerian state. Let's look at the troops that ECOWAS has on ground. An intervention in EJ will rely heavily on Nigeria, like I said, which has 223,000 personnel as well as a modern fighter, jets and armed helicopters. These are the advantage Nigeria has on Nigeria Republic. Not only does Nigeria have the largest army in the region, experts say it makes 
logistical sense to rely on Nigeria, which shares a 1,600 kilometer, that is 1,000 mile long border with Niger. Senegal said on Thursday that it will participate if ECOWAS decides to intervene militarily in Niger. The country's foreign minister, Aisata Talsol, told journalists that you know Talsol is another democratic leader that is being rejected by the people. There are demonstrations in Senegal and um, Talsol uh, would uh, be facing a difficult support from its people. But it is supporting the ECOWAS uh, on any military action because some of these leaders, they fear that military takeovers in Africa can affect their government. Not that they have tried uh, with democracy, but it's because they know they have failed. That's why they are afraid. One of the reasons why uh, these guys want to uh, interfere in NJ, uh, uh coup, coup d'etat is because of the fear for their government. Generally, democracy has not really yielded dividends to the African people because of corrupt leaders, because of leaders that are selfish and are just there for their personal interests. Just take a look at what Akpavu did in the house and how the house members are sharing money when the country is greatly in debt and Nigerians are hungry. People are dying of hunger by the day. And you see they are growing fat on the nation's goodies. Senegal is supporting, aside from Senegal, I don't see any other country that is uh, willing to go head to head. Please subscribe to Face TV Africa and turn the notification on. Face TV Africa, Edjo, and subscribe, subscribe, and hit it. Face TV. Was Wobby?